Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Taking Your Job Search Online. My name is Kelsey Santarosa. I'm an employee at Workforce Windsor Essex. And as always, I am excited to be with you here virtually. Today, we're going to be talking about something that as, as individual as our fingerprint or as a snowflake, I might be exaggerating a little bit and you've already seen the title of this video. So of course, you know, today we're going to be talking about resumes. How do we build them? How do we make sure that they are a reflection of us, our skills and what we bring to the table as a prospective employee? Let's get started. The first thing we're going to talk about is exactly how a resume is structured. At the top, you're going to want to include your name and your contact information. This can include your email address, uh, your phone number, cell phone or home phone number, and maybe even your social media handles if you think that's appropriate. One of the things that I have to mention here is what email address you're using. We definitely don't want to use that first email address that we created, uh, you know, as young teenagers, especially if there are, you know, crazy amounts of underscores or birth year numbers, pets names, uh, or it's just something that uh, is aside from maybe our, our name, initials, um, and things like that. So we want to make sure our, our email address itself is professional uh, and our contact information is listed at the top. The next thing that we're going to do when we're talking about sectioning uh, is talk about how we're relaying our experience and our skills. So we want to make sure that our resume includes a skill profile. So these are soft and transferable, maybe technical skills that we're bringing to the position. Think maybe four to six of those. Then we're going to list education. So high school, the uh, name of the institution, university, college, uh, or any other diplomas or certificates that we've gained post-secondary would also be included there. You can include awards, accomplishments, and other certificates as well, as long as they're relevant to the job. We don't want to start digging through that hope chest of certificates that we've been gaining uh, throughout our lives, but as long as they are relevant to the job, please feel free to include them you'll find information about what the employer is looking for directly in that job posting. You'll also be able to find some of those keywords and values uh, of that employer and company on their website. So take a minute to kind of see what it is and who it is that they hire uh, and what values they may have so that you can best align those skills, uh, that experience and um, those certificates and awards uh, to that company. Now, we have to talk about the two largest sections sometimes aside from education, and that is work experience and volunteer experience. The only difference being work experience you're paid for and volunteer experience you're not. So work experience, we want to make sure that we are including the name of the company, the position that we held, and the time frame in which we were employed. The other thing that we can do underneath there and what we need to include is a few bullet points about the tasks and the actions that we completed while we were employed for that company. So what do I mean when I'm talking about actions or tasks? What we want to see is that you designed, maybe you created, you initiated or launched something in the company. You deducted, you consolidated, you're enhancing or you had expanded. Uh, lifted, maximized, reported to, leveraged. These are the words that really speak to what our role was as an employee and what we contributed to the organization while we were there. And we want to see those types of action verbs uh, in both our work experience and our uh, non-paid volunteer experience. Because just because we didn't get paid didn't mean we weren't applying skills or weren't learning new ones. Okay, now it's time to talk about how the resume should look and what we shouldn't see in a resume. We should not be putting our social insurance number or our SIN on our resume. And we don't often include photos of ourselves unless specifically asked for by the employer. Now, when it comes to what the resume looks like, you can find different formats online. But as a general rule of thumb, we wanna make sure that our resumes are clean. They are in black font and that we're using an accessible font such as Arial, Calibri, Times New Roman, and that we're using a size 11 or 12 font. This makes sure that it's easy to read, it's legible and clear. Of course, this may not to apply to, may not apply to some people in more creative fields. If you're a graphic designer or an editor, 
uh, and you're working in an arts field, you might choose to add some color or some graphics on your resume, but that is specific to a career and should be well noted based on uh, your experience. So we've talked a little bit now about what's in there, uh, what it should look like as a base, how we're structuring it. Uh, the last thing that we are going to talk about are references. So. We've said to the employer references available on request, what happens when they call for those references? Well, it's important to keep your list of references handy. Make sure that they know that you're applying for jobs and you can let them know which companies you've applied for so that they can expect to call if you're successful. Having great references is part of maintaining a great network. You may not have had a wonderful experience with a particular employer or company, but maintaining a healthy relationship and a positive working relationship with previous colleagues may mean that you have a reference in the future. The same goes with great teachers, mentors, professors, uh, and instructors that you come across in your life. Or perhaps it's a great community relationship that you've built because you've been volunteering in the community. Any professional, personal, or academic reference that you can think of, make sure you're checking in with them every once in a while, seeing how things are, so that when it comes time to say, hey, I'm applying for a job, uh, can I still list you as this reference? It's not going to come as a surprise because you're still keeping in touch. They are still capable of advocating for your experience, uh, your qualities, and your skills, and they will most likely give you an absolute yes. Now. So I know this is a lot of information. As you can see, this is pretty much why most resumes or no two resumes are created the same, but they can be created equal in their format, in their layout, and in the appropriateness of their information. If you have any more questions, we have a lot of great resources on our website at WorkforceWindsorEssex.com. Our Resume 101 support uh, dives into all of this information in more detail. So don't hesitate to check out the website and I'll see you next time on another episode of taking your job search online. Thanks.